Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So today we have a case about a young entrepreneur in Atlanta who was abducted walking into her apartment. No one has a clue on who did it or why. This is the case of Monica Bowie. They gon' find you, catch you sleeping, ooh, ooh, ooh. stay woke. So Monica Bowie was a 34-year-old originally from Pittsburgh. She grew up with her mother, Linda, and stepfather, James. She had two sisters and a brother, and she was known to be very independent, smart, and loving. Her mother always knew that Monica was a leader with a strong personality, but that was something she really admired. After graduating from high school, Monica attended Cheney University of Pennsylvania and majored in accounting. When she graduated in 1996, she was honored as class valedictorian. Monica, after graduation, wanted to start a new chapter in her life, so she moved to Atlanta. Even though she was moving miles away from her family, she still kept in touch. She moved in with her best friend, Danielle, and got a stable job right away. She was doing very well in Atlanta, trying to reach all of her goals. She always knew that she wanted to do her own business, and she did just that. She was the owner of two businesses, a clothing boutique called La Coco Wear, and an event planning and promotions company called Go To Girl for the hip hop artists and high status clients. Monica knew that she needed extra funds to support her businesses, so she did get a gig as an exotic dancer. She only planned to be a dancer at the Blue Fame in Atlanta just for a couple months to reach her finance goal. Now, because Monica worked at the Blue Flame, she was able to really make connections. She met celebrity rappers, athletes, and every businessman. So while Monica danced in the club, she made sure she was working too. She would pass out CDs of the artists she was promoting from her business, and she came across a man named Mark. He was also a businessman, and he found out that Monica was an accountant. So he hired her so that she could work for him to help with his business. So eventually, Monica left her job at the Blue Flame. In 2005, Monica and Mark's relationship turned into a romantic one, and they got engaged. Even though the relationship was going good for Monica, she really wanted to focus on her business. She didn't want to focus on anything else at the time. So she called off the engagement, and Mark and her remained friends. So Monica, at this point, she was in her bag. She was dedicated, you know, to her business. She spent hours and endless nights just building up her business from the ground. And eventually, that paid off. You know, she eventually moved to Buckhead, Atlanta. And we all know, um, I'm pretty sure my Atlanta viewers, Buckhead is, is really a wealthy, you know, high-class area. So Monica, at this point, she was doing very well for herself. Monica also was encountering love again. She met a man hosting an event named Shernada Rico Walters. He was a salesman and he was really into Monica. So they started, you know, to pursue a relationship and they also got engaged in 2007. So Monica didn't have any issues pulling men to get that ring on her finger, but she was really interested in Rico. During the engagement, Monica's mom wasn't really supportive because she felt like Rico wasn't mature enough. You know, he had a troubling past. He always got in trouble with the law and things like that. So, you know, Monica's mom felt like she could do better. In the past, Rico was arrested for selling drugs. So they really didn't want this lifestyle to affect Monica. Even though Monica's family expressed to her that they didn't really care for Rico, she still went on and planned her wedding. She felt like this was the person she wanted to be with and things would be just fine. But on June 20th, 2007, Monica and her fiance Rico found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Rico asked Monica if he can buy her car to go to the barbershop. 
Now during this time, police approached Rico in the parking lot because it smelled like Mary Jane. When they asked Rico to, you know, show them his vehicle, open up the car, they searched it and they found a firearm, money, and Mary Jane. Before they arrested Rico, they told him to call the owner of the car. So when Monica got in contact with police, she was very adamant and told police that she was unaware that there was a gun and drugs in the vehicle. She stated that she allowed her fiance to drive the car and she didn't know, you know, about anything else. But still after Monica expressed she had no idea these items were in the car, the police still arrested Monica along with Rico. Monica had never been in trouble with the law before, so this was very traumatizing for her to be staying at Fulton County Jail. But after investigation, Monica was finally released and dropped of all charges due to her clean record, but Rico was still inside. Rico's charges were dropped, but he was still in custody because he was on parole after serving two years for a drug conviction. The handgun that was in Monica's car was technically a parole violation for him. So he was still locked inside and had to wait for a parole board meeting to discuss his release. So no one really knew when Rico was going to get out. Even though Monica was released, she still felt that she had to stay by Rico's side until he came out. Like she was going to stick beside her man. You know, that was her fiance. So she continued her wedding planning. On July 4th, 2007, Monica had called her mom to let her know that on March 30th, 2008, she was getting married and that the family needed to save the date. Linda had no idea that was going to be the last time she talked with her daughter. On July 5th, 2007, the next day, Monica scheduled a meeting with her attorney to discuss some things regarding her arrest. Like she really wanted to make sure her record was super clean and nothing was going to follow her in the future. So when she arrived to the meeting, she was still on a high about her wedding. She was acting normal and smiling like it was just a regular day for her. And after the meeting, around 4 p.m., she went home to her apartment and made plans to go out with her friends that night. So her friends came by, picked Monica up, and she was out having a good time in the city. You know, Atlanta has so many, you know, clubs and lounges. So she pretty much was living her best life. But literally just a few minutes later, after Monica's friend pulled off and left, a maroon-colored 2002 Mercury Sable car drove right up on Monica and two men described to be in their late 20s or 30s abducted Monica. She was taken. Residents at the Lennox apartment in Atlanta heard a woman screaming for help multiple times in the parking lot. Several witnesses checked to see what was going on from their window and saw that the car sped off. 911 calls was made immediately reporting the abduction. Now, no one really stated that they saw Monica themselves being put in the car, but they knew for a fact it was a woman yelling for help multiple times. To the point it was unbearable to ignore. So witnesses in the complex knew that something was happening. Police did come by to the scene to get an idea of what might have happened. They knew a struggle would occur. They found a woman's green jacket, jewelry on the floor, a pair of glasses, a broken perfume bottle, broken fingernails, and a to-go box of chicken wings, and a folder filled with paperwork. Now, of course, investigators collected all of this evidence to use for the case, and when they looked inside of the folders, this really helped them because it all had Monica's name on it. Witnesses did come forward and state that the same maroon colored car was waiting in that same parking spot space earlier that day when investigators found Monica's belongings. News was spreading fast in Atlanta about her abduction and her friends contacted Linda right away about her daughter. As a mom, she of course was freaking out because it didn't make any sense. 
So Linda and her sister drove from Pittsburgh to Atlanta as soon as they could to figure out what was going on with Monica's disappearance. The family spent days in Atlanta passing out flyers and speaking out in interviews. Monica's ex-fiance Mark also came down to Atlanta to join. Police were able to locate the vehicle that abducted Monica. However, according to the Charlie's project, the car had been burned and set ablaze. Investigators also found out that the car was reported stolen. The owner of the car told police that they let a friend borrow it for the day and he never returned it. Detectives arrested a man named Jasper Keels. He was charged for actually stealing the Mercury Sable and there was also possession of, you know, Mary Jane in the car as well. So police wanted to know if Jasper was also connected to Monica's abduction but they couldn't find solid evidence on Jasper to mark him as a main suspect. Police also looked into Rico, but he was in jail at the time of Monica's disappearance. But around September 2007, police charged Jasper Kills with kidnapping because they felt like the abduction was planned and Jasper had a play in it, but there was a possibility that he didn't know Monica personally. After charging Jasper Kill, there were no leads after that. The case just went silent. No arrest was ever made. Police did state that they felt Monica's disappearance had something to do with drug activity, but without much evidence and suspects, Monica's abduction became a cold case. Now the sad part for me about this case was that the mainstream outlets barely reported on Monica's abduction. But around this time, the media chose to cover the case of the runaway bride, a middle-aged white woman from Duluth, Georgia, who actually chose to stage her own abduction. Her disappearance literally sparked a nationwide search and intensive media coverage. Meanwhile, we have Monica from Atlanta, Georgia, who was abducted from her apartment parking lot with witnesses that heard her cries. After five years later, the TV show Find Our Missing wanted to share Monica's case. This was the first time ever really her abduction was featured on a national platform. The fact that it took five years for her case to receive national news, that wasn't a surprise for me at all. Monica has been missing for literally 15 years. At the time of her disappearance, Monica was five foot and four inches tall and weighed about 135 pounds. She has brown eyes and brown hair. She was last seen wearing a dark green dress shirt and blue jeans. She had braces on her teeth and both of her ears are pierced. Monica would be 48 years old today. But for me, I feel like this case definitely showed a lot when it comes with dealing with minority cases. One, I hate the fact that she was literally abducted from her apartment and witnesses heard this and there was barely any national attention. But yet we have another woman, whereas of she pretty much staged her abduction and it was all over the news. I definitely feel like America has this obsession with cases like this woman here where she was literally pretty much, I guess what, I think they called her what, the runaway bride in a way. I feel like America has this weird obsession when it comes to crime or missing and turn it into this big old headline and and it's almost like a show and honestly five years is way too long like you don't know if Monica is a victim of trafficking you know you don't know if her life was taken away and the person who did it is somewhere you know free I feel like if a white woman was abducted in her apartment complex, it would have definitely been national news. Like, I'm pretty sure they would have found her without a doubt. It wouldn't have been no five years later they're talking about it. And I hate the fact that Monica's case was overlooked. But I don't know, you guys. Let me know what you guys think regarding Monica's case. Do you feel like... um 
the fiance's past had anything to do with this because I did see a lot of that when I was researching. Um, I did see a lot of speculation on that. Do you guys believe that it has something to do with, you know, her past, you know, working at the club? Or do you feel like someone was watching her in the complex? Let me know what you guys think regarding her case. But still, let's go ahead and pray for her family because I know they're most likely still grieving. They're still hurting because... It's not a good feeling to have a loved one go missing and you don't know where they are. It's very unsettling. It's something that probably takes years for you to even get over. So let's pray for the family so that they can remain hopeful. Because I do believe that no matter what, the truth will always come to light. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and pray for the family to just settle in with peace. Father God, we come together and we pray for Monica's family. I ask you, Lord God, that even though it's been years for this case to be solved and for Monica to be found, I pray that you open up a new, fresh investigation with this case. I pray that you open up new evidence, new leads. I pray that people that were involved, they come forward, Father Lord God, and that the truth is exposed. I pray for families that have lost loved ones, that have lost their children, that have lost their parents, grandparents, cousin, nieces, extended family members and friends. I pray for family that really lost a loved one and they can't find them right now. Father, Lord God, I pray that you you just help them during this time. I pray that you just give them hope, Lord. Also ask you, Father, Lord God, to just bring out fresh details regarding missing cases, Lord God, around America, especially when it comes to um, just the black community, Father, Lord God. You know that race definitely goes hand in hand with a lot of these situations where a lot of the cases are being overlooked and the mainstream is not covering it. I pray, Father Lord God, that you just break down those walls. You break down those barriers, Father Lord God, and you help these families find their loved ones. You um, help these families receive the resources to hire maybe private investigators, to hire lawyers, Father Lord God. Let your will be done, Father, because you know all things and you can do all things. So, Father, Lord God, I'm just praying for Monica's family to have peace and healing and hope, Lord. And I'm also praying for every viewer that has lost a member or a friend, Lord, that you still give them peace and healing and hope, Lord God. And really just hope and closure so i thank you lord god for what you're about to do and what you're currently doing lord in jesus name we pray amen thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you so far for 90k subbies i really appreciate the love and support on this channel we definitely started from zero and look at where we are now. So y'all's support is just amazing, amazing, amazing. Continue to love on these families and I'll see you guys in the next case. Ain't gonna find you, catch you sleeping, ooh, ooh, ooh. stay woke, baby creeping.